Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. I guess that's the headline these days. I've made a couple of similar videos in the last couple of days, but it seems as though, very oddly, very unexpectedly, although if you view it from a different perspective, quite expectedly, CNN is actually kind of telling the truth these days. Now, are they a reform network? Do they deserve praise, forgiveness? acceptance? Do they deserve credit? Eh, not exactly willing to go there just yet, but at least it's something. You know, at least the average CNN viewer, to a certain extent, is getting somewhat decent information. CNN continues to ring the alarm bells. Things aren't going as we expected. I keep hearing them say that. They're finally forced to admit the truth about the Trump sham trials. Two days ago, Fareed Zakaria basically admitted the truth out loud, and well now, reporting on that truth continues. Let me show you guys exactly exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so as per usual, CNN only responds, only says the truth when they're kind of forced to, you know, when they have to, when they have no other choice. Well, thankfully enough, the American people or the American voters seem to have given them no other choice. CNN says voters in swing states are, quote, disgusted and tired with the Trump trials. A CNN correspondent revealed some stunning details about swing state voter attitudes towards former President Donald Trump's hush money trial in Manhattan that he shared on air on Monday. Chief National Affairs correspondent Jeffrey Zelaney told a CNN panel that voters in some states have told him that they are, quote, disgusted and tired with the trial. Because just before the court went into session today, some new poll numbers came out, uh, and Trump was actually touting these polls, the New York Times, Siena poll, showing that Trump is doing really well in several key battleground states, despite this ongoing trial. He is, and this is a reminder that we have, uh, and you can see the numbers right there, that we have no idea at all the political fallout from this, if there is any, from this trial. It's kind of remarkable to think that there wouldn't be, but if you look at these battleground states that uh, are going to be central to this reelection, the former president is beating the current president outside the margin of error in every state but two, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Wisconsin actually is a bright spot on that board for uh, President Biden. But again, we will have to uh, wait and see what this uh, uh, verdict is and how voters um, are um, assessing it. But as I talk to voters across the country in these battleground states, A, many of them aren't paying attention at all and are disgusted and sort of tired with this. But the numbers beyond the uh, horse race are so interesting. The reason that President Biden is having problems, it's because of young voters, voters of color, inflation. That is the issue on the minds of voters, not this. And you know, again, it's the same thing. We tried to warn the Democrats not to do it. Their own allies tried to warn them not to do it. And especially not with this ridiculous sham trial. When we were covering all the polling data relating to how convictions in these various trials would affect public perception and support for either candidate, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, the only two cases that kind of moved the needle to the benefit of Joe Biden, at least in the early days, not so much anymore, was the Mafake Elector scheme trial and the January 6th trial. We saw time and time again in these polls that if Donald Trump was convicted in the hush money case, in Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's case, the exact opposite effect would occur. That the numbers would dramatically shift in Donald Trump's favor, because that case was viewed as not credible, as irrelevant, and as a clear, politically motivated witch hunt. And now the Democrats are stuck with this case as their last-ditch effort, they're doubling down and they're pursuing the case, they're continuing. And the exact expected result is what's happening. Voters are disgusted with the clear political politicization and weaponization of the justice system. You know, people are paying attention. And speaking of people are paying attention, they're looking and they're listening when stuff like this drops. Was it appropriate for Speaker Johnson to show up at uh, the trial of the former president today? So look, I'm, I can't speak to, uh, um, don't want to comment, obviously, as this is related to 2024 elections, and I can't speak to the speaker's schedule. That is something for him to decide on. And that right there is the quiet part out loud. Karine Jean-Pierre essentially says that she can't comment on the Biden-led witch hunt against former President Donald Trump because it's, quote, related to the 2024 elections. Fox News reacted. Yeah, because they're really, they're not good at anything. They're bad at everything. They have the reverse Midas touch. Everything they touch turns to mud. It's terrible. The only thing they're good at is elections and they're very good at it and it was a, a pretty hysterical thing that we heard from the white house uh either earlier today or tomorrow uh, yesterday i was i'm not exactly sure when uh where the press secretary declined to comment 
on the uh, current kangaroo case mm. going on in New York, uh, claiming the Hatch Act, saying that she couldn't <laughs> talk about it because it was all politics. <laughs> right. And it was the truest. It's the only true thing that strange lady has said since she has been at that podium. And she is, by the way, the worst press secretary in the history of the country. But she did. That was one true thing. And it was truly remarkable. So apparently talking about these cases could possibly violate the Hatch Act. That right there proves that the cases themselves are political and the people can obviously see it. That comment or rather the lack of comment is all the proof that you need. And when we're talking about the people being disgusted by what they're seeing and hearing here, it goes beyond what Democrats are saying, what the White House is saying, what Alvin Bragg is doing. It's not just them it's also the judge overseeing the case, Mr. Juan Merchan, and of course his family. For Pete's sakes, let's put it into perspective. Judge Juan Merchan, or Judge Juan Merchan, I don't know how to pronounce his name, don't really care, well his daughter is literally fundraising off of the hush money trial, fundraising for the Democrat party. The Trump team expressed their concerns, they were highly critical of this, and what was the response? The judge hit Donald Trump with a frickin' gag order. They slapped a gag order on the former president and current Republican presidential nominee in the midst of an election cycle. You cannot tell me that that's not disgusting, because that's exactly what it is. I mean, according to former Deputy Assistant Attorney General John Yu, based on his prosecutorial experience, this case should have never even been brought forth, just like the FEC and the DOJ refused to take the case, which is consistent with the FEC and DOJ's initial not only reluctance, but flat-out denial to pursue the case or charges to begin with. I agree with Jim. I don't think that the prosecution wanted to end with Michael Cohen. The problem for them is they went too far last week with the Stormy Daniels testimony, and they realized if they're going to bring more of the kind of witnesses that they had in mind, that it would really trigger a mistrial. So they've been, they're trying to get out fast while they can. The terrible thing is their worst witness, the person with all of the credibility issues to the extent that he's been convicted of lying to both Congress and the special counsel. That's hard to do. Usually you only lie to one or the other, but he lied to both of them. That's a neat trick. This has got to be one of the worst witnesses that you could put. In fact, Jim and I were both at the Justice Department. I think he would share this view. We would never have authorized a prosecution like this that was so dependent on someone who's been convicted of federal crimes for lying. So I think if you're Trump, you leave them with this message at the end of the Cohen at the end of Cohen's testimony, which is, did we cross the Rubicon? Did we go after a former president for the first time in the history of this republic in 235 years for this guy, for this kind of witness, for these kinds of charges? The other thing I would say is, you could, you could, I think there's a good chance that this judge would have to dismiss these charges as not proven even beyond, before you put on a defense. He said, and I quote, we would never have authorized a prosecution like this that was so dependent on someone who has been convicted of federal crimes for lying. They would have never pursued the case, but Alvin Bragg did. And not only that, they timed the case to be right in the midst of an election season. They rushed the case forward and expedited the process to make sure the trial date was before the election. Then they issued gag orders and fined Donald Trump. Then they forced him to stay in New York City, pulling him off the campaign trail. In other words, when a former top prosecutor says, look, this is a weak case and we wouldn't have even taken it, they took the case and more. They took it to the next freaking level. If that doesn't show absolute bias, then what does? There's obvious, clear political motivation here at the root of all of it. And simply what CNN was saying earlier in the earlier clip is that that's exactly how the American people feel. Disgusted and tired of it all. The number one issue is inflation in the economy. And following closely is crime, immigration, foreign policy, and many other issues. But the Democrats are putting all their eggs in one basket. They're putting all their eggs in the Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, Alvin Bragg, hush money basket. And frankly, I can't think of anything more stupid. All right, well, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. You know, we'd love to have you here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.